We're trying to take the political headshots out of Parliament. First offences get a warning, some time in the box. Second offences and beyond get a suspension. The MP is out of the game for a day or more and they forfeit their salary during that time. The team is also penalized. If this offence takes place during question period, they lose questions, which are often uh, quite uh, important for a party's promotion of particular issues. All right. The bid by Nathan Cullen to restore decorum to the House of Commons. Well, we don't need to restore decorum to our little trio of MPs. They're back for the first time this year. Roger Kuzner, the Liberal from Cape Breton. Megan Leslie, the NDP from Halifax and deputy leader of the party, and Edmonton's pride and joy for the Conservatives, James Rajat. Welcome to you all. Happy New Year and all that yeah. stuff. Happy New Are you happy Nine. to be back Nine. in a sleety, snowy capital? Yeah. Yep. In this yep. last week, that was good. All right, I want to talk to you about that decorum push. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen, but what do you think, Roger? Does it make sense to you to start suspending people? Why'd you and... pick on me first about the forum? Well, I've seen you uh, yelling and screaming, and I remember your night before Christmas thing, so yeah, yeah. that's always but, very different. Uh, yeah, and being an old hockey coach, eh, you, you, it's sort of in your DNA, and I, I know uh, James is pretty well behaved, and I think Megan's pretty well behaved. Yeah, you guys are always well behaved. But, uh, I think so. Uh, listen, I, and I'm one, uh, I'm sort of back and forth, but uh, nothing vicious or nothing. Uh, Offensive, I don't think. Usually, it's James Moore and I are sort of chirping back and forth, uh, <laughs> laughing at each other's chirps. But uh, you know, I think Andrew has done a pretty good job of late. He's taken questions away from uh, from uh, parties that uh, are, you know continue to uh, create some havoc in the in, in the house. I, I don't think it's been that bad. But uh, we had the one blow up there. The you know when Van uh, Lone, Rocky Van Lone and uh, <laughs> Apollo Mulcair were going to go toe to toe with the. You know, so that was that was rare, and it was uh, you know, but uh, I, I don't know if uh, you know if the president of the league here is going <laughs> to throw out suspensions. Do you need yeah? Do you need the speaker to turn into a traffic cop and issue tickets, basically, or is that going overboard? Well, you know, I think every bit helps, and all we're asking here all we're asking for here is the fact that the speaker could have a little bit more power, that he could actually say, you know what, that's not on. Um, and, and not just the MP, but also the party then suffers the consequences of it. Roger's right. I think the speaker has taken some, uh, some little steps. He does take some questions away. But I think we should give him the power to actually do this and the power to make MPs who are those problem MPs. And, you know, we're being all polite and lovely on this uh, panel, but we know who they are. And it's time that we get tough on those folks because it's not acceptable. We're not children. This is the House of Commons. We're members of Parliament. Enough's enough. Well, you're a Mr. Nice Guy. I never see you getting any decorum spats, but do you think there's something more needs to be done? Or Well, I, I mean, I'm always one for raising decorum. And I mean, we can have passionate political debate without calling names. And I think for a, in a lot of cases, we do. You look at the debate today on the immigration bill, I think it was, for the most part, it's very respectful. I would agree with my two colleagues. I think the Speaker actually has taken some steps to sort of send messages to people uh, as individual MPs. But uh, I, I would actually, you know, I... He actually has a fair amount of power and authority now, so perhaps he just needs more encouragement from all of us as members of Parliament to exercise it more. If this House worked like you three on the panel... It would be a wonderful thing. It'd be, it'd be like peace, love and army all around. All right. It's all their fault. It's all their fault. <laughs> Start yelling. All right. You're the employment um, insurance critic for the party, right? I am. So there's this poor woman on, on Prince Edward Island marching up and down in front of the employment office uh, saying she's been cut off, cut off benefits because the only job available is when she has to go into Charlottetown for and she can't get there, it doesn't have a car and there's no buses running up and down. Yes. Is this a one-off or is this a trend or is this just uh, you know, a squeaky wheel that's looking for some EI grease? Uh, the minister's had a rough time. She, she lost all those uh, student loan files yeah, uh, you know, a couple of months back. and. Then they couldn't find uh, the, the uh, gal that, uh, that, that had uh, been cut off EI and she had been protesting out in front of their office for a couple of days. If it's she hard to find just, when yeah, they're out the window. Well, she was in a snow yeah. bank. <laughs> uh, listen, this is just the, the tip of the iceberg. Really? Um, we, we know that, and I'm sure that Service Canada employees are saying, what the heck are we going to do with, you know, the, the, with, with the rules around it? There's always been rules that have made people... Uh, make sure that they, you know they're actively seeking employment, upgrade, you know, up, uh, uh, 
making their uh, resumes uh, and cover letters and that kind of stuff, getting resumes mm -hmm. around. Uh, but, you know, what they're being asked of now, I, you know, back in, we're going to Robbie Burns tomorrow night, and I, I know back in Scotland they had the clearances and they, uh, they chased the Scots out of the Highlands sort of thing. What it's looking like here is that Where they're that chasing. From? <laughs> they are going to chase people. I think he's already been at a Robbie Burns. They event. are chasing people out of rural communities in this country, not just in the East Coast, okay? In rural communities that work in seasonal industries, uh, they're being shaken down. That's and that's okay. what's going to take place. And we're going to see more of it. Okay. Let's let someone else get a word in edgewise here, Megan. <laughs> well, when Roger said tip of the iceberg, I'll, I'll remind people that these EI changes just happened. Right. Yes. When, when they were tabled, we said, look, this is not going to be good. And we had all these different scenarios about what might happen. The changes have been implemented and they've already happened. It's incredible how quickly this is happening. So I do think it's the tip of the iceberg. And I don't think that Canadians who've paid into EI should be punished for the conservatives' mismanagement of our economy. If, it, if people can't get jobs, that's not their fault. But somehow we're taking it out on them and punishing them. It's a little different there, eh? I mean, Edmonton, you put up your finger and five people throw job offers at you. Well, there, it's yeah, harder I mean, to you get. come to my riding, I mean, the fact is there's such a dearth of, of uh, a lack of skilled labor and unskilled labor. I mean, businesses come to me each and every day and say, we need more people. But in fact, as the minister pointed out, there are areas of, of high unemployment, in fact, that actually have skilled shortages. And I think all of us as members of parliament will recognize that. So we need to, we need to do, deal with that mismatch. We have people looking for work and we have employers looking for employees. So we need to deal with that on a large scale basis. That's exactly what the minister is doing with respect to individual cases. In fact, I mean, people are, they can deal with individual circumstances. They are, employment officials do take that into consideration. But we do need to deal with the skills issue. It's probably our largest economic challenge going forward, frankly. As a uh, I, I know it's significant, but you have to remember, even in Atlantic Canada, how much a, a part of the, the regional GDP regional industries contribute and those industries need skilled workers too and many of them sort of knit a couple of different industries together a couple of different uh, jobs together uh, you know if, if they lose skilled workers I, I but, think it's going to have a, a huge Finley, impact minister, on the GDP of, of those regions. Our two minutes Minister Finley and Minister Kenny every time they're in the region they have employers saying to them we need more skilled people we need more unskilled people we need more people in our various uh, industries here and they're asking for a lot of more pe new Canadians to come in that's part of the answer but that's not the entire answer we need to well, we've found when the ministers when, when the ministers come they don't listen they, they they come in and they do the the, the talking points and they, this is the way it's going not. to be we've done more but, changes but in immigration listen. and labor reform than in, in the last 20 years right to try to deal with this immigration isn't EI policy yeah, yeah where was the consultation on that we could have told you this was going to happen it's dealing but it's dealing with the labor issue overall right so immigration is part of the answer but obviously dealing with the skills mismatch domestically is part and, of the answer. And I well. don't disagree with that aspect, but I know that the changes that are being made are, are going to have uh, an impact on seasonal industries, and, and most of those seasonal industries are, are they, they take place in rural communities. Good discussion. All right, a quick one to you, Megan. Uh, Elizabeth May floated this rumor, and I want to know if you think it's already happened. She says sources tell her they're going to merge the Environment Department with the Natural Resources Department. Now, to be fair, the Prime Minister's office First, the Prime Minister didn't really say no, but now his office is saying absolutely not. But I bet you're going to argue they've already merged in, in some way. I, I can't <laughs> tell the difference between Peter Kent and Joe Oliver on a good day. Come on. Come on. Seriously. You can rebut if you want. They are completely different. I mean, obviously, the departments are going to remain different. The Prime Minister did rebut that in question period. I mean, these are the same sources that are saying Elvis is walking around the building and Jimmy Hoff is buried in the pillar over there. So let's... Is that I mean, true? This is just unbelievable. Okay. I mean, even have this discussion. I, I, had, I had a bigger discussion, but you guys didn't only gave me a minute left, so I didn't think I could have it. All right. We can Thank, go over time, Dominic. No, we can't. I've got to move along. Thanks very much. We'll see you next Tuesday. Coming up after the break, the Liberal leader leadership race features a second debate this weekend, so we're going to continue our introduction of the candidates. After the break, we salute the top military brass that's in the contest. Please stay with us. Canadian Forces. As a former navigator and a private pilot, I can see the 